I'm Rachel Brady, welcome back to All One Whisk. So it's 2017, Happy New Year. Uh, today's video is about five ways to improve your family's diet in 2017. Number one, my first tip is to meal plan. So I'm a bit of a meal planning nerd. However, this is a reminder even to myself because I've kind of fallen off the meal planning wagon over Christmas. Meal planning is the best way to make sure that you guys, your families are getting decent, um, a decent spread of kind of meat dishes, vegetable dishes, fish dishes. I only plan dinners. I don't plan breakfast or lunch, but I try to just mix those up and we eat like, like leftovers and things like that for lunch. Uh, we always just have kind of porridge or savoury things for breakfast. But if you plan your dinners, uh, sometimes it won't go to plan, but, but if you try your hardest to stick to it, it's the best way to ensure that you don't waste food and that you eat a good varied diet. Number two is widen your repertoire. So again, this is for me as much as you. Go through those cookbooks. I've got so many cookbooks, it's not even funny. Open them, think, have I cooked this dish before. Recently I did, um, I started doing a salmon on croute. I did it for a party. I've made it for when my in-laws came over. It is so easy. Try something new, something you've never done before. It's also a really great way of introducing your kids to new dishes. The worst thing you can do as a parent in terms of family food uh, relating to children's fussiness is to just keep serving the same thing all the time because they will never um, grow an interest in other dishes. You can't expect them to like new things if you never try, if you never serve up new things. So really widen that repertoire. Number three is cook with the kids. So I know myself, this is probably the worst one on the list if I'm gonna be honest, for me. And I, I did a bit of cooking with the kids this morning. We did a kind of leftover chili slow cooker stew. And oh, it is, it can be difficult, it is a bit stressful. So maybe do one at a time, if not all the kids together. Certainly my son, who is now six and a half, has got a real growing interest in food and cooking food. He will sit and watch a food programme with us. He watched a Rick Stein programme with us last night. I think cooking with kids, getting them hands on in the kitchen and really listening to their ideas it's a great way to get them more interested in food and to really open their hearts and, 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 and kind of encourage their interest in what they're eating and they will eat a wider variety of food if they cook with you, I can guarantee it. Number four is eat together as much as possible. So we, my husband leaves really early and comes back really late, so we understand, we get it. A lot of the time I eat with just with the kids so on the evenings when I know he's going to be back for say six o'clock, we'll wait and we'll, we'll try and eat together as much as possible. I think eating, I think adults eating with the kids is a big one. We have never, ever, ever been a family, apart from they were really little, to eat separate meals. Um, it's really important that you make, I think, one dish for the whole family to eat. We're not doing separate dinners. It encourages fussiness. And I think that time around the dinner table is so important. I'm really old fashioned like this. So even if you can't manage it in the week, really prioritise eating together at the weekends and set a good example. And that means you eating your vegetables as well. Number five, it's a bit of an obvious one and I nearly didn't include it, but for me, again, it's a reminder that in 2017 we are having a smoothie every day. Uh, what I find difficult is getting the smoothie recipe right so the kids like it and I still get some greens in there because I don't just want a really sweet smoothie. Uh, so I struggle with that too. I think a real classic is like a little bit of avocado, some banana and some berries and then mix that up with some coconut water or a little bit of juice and water. Um, so it's a really good way if you give your smoothie before you get to the kids before they have their breakfast um, I find if you give it to them after they have that, they've had their breakfast they're not interested you can sneak a few greens in there but don't overgo it on the greens if you want your kids to have the smoothie because in my experience that's when they don't like it so I really hope those five tips um, for better family food in 2017 have helped you. They are definitely going to be things that I'm going to try and stick to. Uh, in this house, we don't do diets. That includes the adults. We try and really focus on just kind of embracing foods, whole foods, eating together, all that stuff. It's going to make a really big difference to you and your family's diet. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you haven't. What else, what else, what else? Comment below with your tips for better family food in 2017. And I think that's all for now. Bye.